But the largest econ salon I curated as part of the Happy Valley project was December 1st, this past December, in field work. And I was interested in how gathering many ways of angling in on the financial meltdown and various kinds of housing crises might create conversations, both through the works themselves and also the different audiences that would gather for the different components of the econ salon. So um, the evening included various installations from a dollhouse squat set up by Right to Survive, which is a group of homeless or houseless people and their supporters fighting for rights. Um, and an installation by Jennifer Hardacker, a video shot on a conch shell um, called Shelter. And also a video project I worked on with Jen Coleman, Andrea Murray, Kristen Sheeran called It's a Wonderful Time to Buy. Um, and then there were a number of talks. Ibrahim Mubarak of Right to Survive addressed the crowd, as did Angela Martin of Economic Fairness Oregon, and she gave a talk about organizing people around foreclosures and credit card debt. And I collaborated with Mitch Heider and Jules Boykoff on a tale of magicians who puffed up money that lost its puff. You might ask just how the magicians puffed up money to quite that puff. So this is a project that emerged from conversation with Jules and Mitch Heider, who's a magician and a whistler who lives in Eugene, Oregon. One off afternoon when we gathered in his living room for magic shows um, with our daughter, and we began to talk about how we could cast speculative financiers as magicians gone bad. So after, over the next few months, I began to write the story and try to really tell the story of the financial meltdown, not skimping on the sort of details of, of, the, of the speculative mechanisms. And I would mail this story back and forth to Eugene. And Mitch and I would work out the resonances between financial shenanigans and magic tricks that Mitch might perform. The process was one where my commitment to, the, to trying to tell the story informed how we thought about magic, and how we thought about magic informed how I could possibly tell the story. So as I wrote, I would also try out the drafts on our daughter, Jessie, she's here building the book, um, to test the language, because informed by how, as I mentioned before, how I tune out financial descriptions. And I realize that tuning out is, such, is a way of remaining powerless. And this was a project about thinking about how to make creative forms in order to investigate power. I strove to write a story that would be built on sound and imagery and playfulness, disrupting the way finance is usually conveyed.